So I know I'm like a year too late on this review, but I figured it was better late than never because I actually wrote this back when the movie came out, but I never fully got around to reviewing it because I had a bunch of other stuff, but now I have time. So good news for all of you. You get to see my me ranting about the Netflix Death Note movie. Now, when I was 12 years old, I went to my best friend's house. And one of the things we always did when we'd spend the night or wake up together is we'd binge watch TV shows. I remember one of the first TV shows we ever watched together and decided to binge was Psych. But she decided to introduce me to an anime because I had never ever watched anime before. It was just something I had never really gotten into. And the anime she introduced me to was Death Note. I think we all know how this story goes. I eventually fell in love with Death Note and would religiously watch it over and over and over again. Even the most anime hating person I think can agree that this that this series was a really fucking good one because it had different themes than most animes you can think of and it had themes of justice, uh, destiny, and fate, and it was all together just put together incredibly well, not only when it comes to animation, but when it comes to plot and character. But everything had changed when the Netflix executives decided that they would be making their own Death Note movie. From the very first trailer, I had very low expectations for this movie, but by God, they went even lower than the expectations I already had. I thought they were going to do something at least similar to the original fucking Death Note, but no. <laughs> the first very noticeable difference is in the appearances of the characters, or at least the three main characters, which is uh, Light, Mia, who is supposed to be Misa, I guess, and uh, L. Now, one of the good things about animation is character design says a lot about a person, and that's seen clearly throughout like Pixar films and many animes. You can clearly tell someone's kind of ambitions or what morals they have just by looking at their character. And this is very prevalent in Death Note. We see a light who is clean cut and he looks like he couldn't really do any harm to anyone except for doing good but we see that multiple times that his looks are deceiving when we see him have these evil little smirks and glances we can see through his character design who he's supposed to be we have mia who or misa basically i would just say misa Misa has the look of someone who is innocent but enjoys dark things. You know, she has a very Lolita, I think that's how you pronounce it, a Lolita type attire, a gothic attire also. She's supposed to be cutesy but also fucking obviously, as I said, dark. And that's exactly who her character is. It's cutesy but dark and also very naive and gullible. And L is very easy to tell. He looks like a fucking hermit. He doesn't look like he ever leaves the house. And that's because he never does he looked the way that he was supposed to look and he did these odd things and you know you could see it within his character design now going over the character design for the actual fucking movie the light in the movie looks like a fucking hipster <laughs> he basically just wears hoodies and pretty much what you'd expect the average high school boy to wear which is a drastic difference from anime light who again as i mentioned would always be clean cut wearing a nice shirt with a tie and all that mia's appearance is so drastically different than misa's appearance because again misa looked naive gullible innocent cutesy all this but mia is supposed to look like kind of this bad girl who we're supposed to like feel is badass and that's not who her character was and then we have L, you can still have someone who appears to have L's character and somebody, even if they're of a different race than L was originally. You can still put on hermit-like clothing and still make it look like they don't get out in the sun all that much. But no, he doesn't look like this. He just looks like he's a super secretive kind of spy type person and it looks fucking weird. And one of the great things about L's character design is nobody fucking would suspect that this lengthy, wonky looking weirdo was L. You can totally suspect that this guy is L because he's walking around with like a face mask and shit and L never did that because he knew 
his wonky appearance would very clearly cover up any suspicion that he was a grandmaster detective. They changed not only the appearances of the characters, but changed them into different characters altogether. When it came to light, he has a major fucking ego because that was kind of earned of him. Light was Japan's most bright student, as well as a model citizen and the fucking police chief's son. No one except L would ever suspect him of being the true Kara. Light had a healthy two-parent household and a loving family, had no past traumas, and was simply bored of everything going around him and wanted to start something new. But of course, to make Light more relatable, he has to be shoved in some mini plot hole where his mom, or not plot hole, mini plot where his mom had been killed by a drunk driver and blah 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 blah. And we feel so bad for Light because he's also, you know, not a popular kid at school, even though the Light from the anime was a completely popular kid at school. In fact, we saw girls clinging to him and wanting to be with him. How many hoes did we see that dude with? They opted out to make Light a cast out, and he also does something that the original Light would never do, which is fucking sell people with homework answers. <laughs> they also make Light chase after Mia, when in the anime it was Misa who was the one who wanted Light's love, and Light was using her, but in this Mia's using Light, it's just bonkers. And maybe you can excuse all of this. Say how it makes it more interesting and such. But when they made Ryuk's character, that's when it pushed me over the edge. Ryuk and L are some of my favorite characters in the whole anime. And they fucked them both up so severely. Ryuk did not just give Light the Death Note as portrayed in the movie. He fucking dropped it on a random place on Earth because he too was bored and wanted to see what would happen if he dropped it on Earth and what a human would do with it. He had seen that the Shinigami world had become rotten and boring and so he wanted to travel and see what it would be like on Earth. It was in a way fate that Light was the one who happened to pick it up and that was one of the huge fucking central ideas. Like I said, fate and justice were huge key themes within the anime. But Netflix threw these out the window, and it takes more than half of the movie to get to the point where one of them even mentions the word justice. They wasted the team who obviously worked very hard on Ryuk's de design and wasted the talent of William Defoe who was fucking an excellent choice for the voice of Ryuk, and they fucking wasted it! They wasted it! And it's such a fucking shame. L is just fucking stupid. His quirks aren't even quirks like they were in the anime, but they try to explain why he has these quirks and why he's weird and all that, and that like eating more candy keeps him up longer or something and he like tracks all of it and it's just like you don't have to explain that we understood kind of why he would like sweets so much and it was because in his core he was fucking kind of childish l in general was just a weird fucking dude and they took that away again but the movie ruined every single character not just the main three now, the actors aren't bad actors, but I personally think that they were just given bad direction. I'm not personally a fan of the girl who played Mia. She, she, she seemed like the lesser of the actors who was, you know, trying to act with the direction they were given. But her character also is the most evil. Like, you have one of the, I, I think, weakest actors playing one of the most evil characters, and it's like, why? And not only this, but they got rid of and changed pretty much every single rule in the Death Note. They never show Light killing L. They never even have L hidden behind his screen and voice manipulator when we first meet him. The m big thing with that is, in the anime, we didn't know who L was originally. We had no idea what he even looked like. So when we did see him, it wasn't only a surprise for the police, but it was also a surprise for us. And the plot is just off and nonsensical. I mean, at one point, Ryuk says that he picked Light because he needs someone to 
separate the weak from the chaff or however you say it. I, and I swear, when I first heard him say this, I thought he said Chad <laughs> instead of chaff. But then the next thing he says is that he wants White to give it up because it's causing fights between Light and Mia and all this weird shit. But I haven't even gotten to the fucking ending. The ending is hysterical with this fucking overdone, overdramatic scene. If you have not seen it, please do. Because I don't want to spoil how fucking hilarious the ending is. Death Note, in my opinion, was a fucking masterpiece of an anime, and just all around a good story I think everyone could enjoy. Its art style is amazing in my opinion, and I also cried at the end the first time I watched it, but then again, I was also like fucking 13, so <laughs> please don't hate me. And the biggest mistake Netflix did was to reboot it. If they truly wanted to make a Death Note movie, it should not have been a reboot it should have been like a sequel or spin-off. This would make it so fans wouldn't really have an excuse to compare other characters to the sequel because it was going to be like an original plot and with new characters, but because they decided to do a reboot, of course, Misa and Mia are gonna be fucking compared. L and old L are gonna be compared. All this shit, they're gonna be all compared. And that's of course again a huge mistake when you make reboots. You're not only going to be criticized on its own merits, but the original source material that they're taking from and the loyalty to the- and you're going to be criticized mostly by the people who still stick loyal to the original source material. And again, it shouldn't have been a reboot. It should have revolved around two new characters even who had to battle it out. You could even say Ryuk got bored again after Light's death in the anime and drops the note and because of the anger and hatred that M has towards Light after finding out that he was Kira, you can make it so that he is battling against a new Kira. Hell, M could even be married to like Light's sister or some shit who decides to like help him battle or whatever. You could do all this cool shit that could lead to, you know, mentions of old characters. You could even bring up old characters who weren't fully explored. Like I said, M, who was not explored, like, anywhere near as much as, like, L. And you can do all this cool shit where you bring back new characters or have references. Like, you could even reference uh, Kira's killing days as the Kira era or something like that. It would be fucking cool as shit. And you would have more of a more stable reason to have this new character called Kira because there was a Kira before who did the same thing and all this and they would have an excuse why he's not as smart as Light because Light was like one in a million of how fucking smart he was. Anyways, that's my review on the Death Note Netflix movie. I know, again, I'm super late on it, but you know, whatever. Tell me your thoughts of the movie down below because I know a lot of people hate it, but some people hate it for different reasons. So tell me why you don't like it in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions and things for me to review, leave it in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like content like this or you like my true crime content, go ahead and subscribe because that would make my day. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Peace out.